right, everyone. Welcome back to the Ramp Podcast. I am here with a special guest this week. It's Mr. Ari Levine, straight from Brooklyn. Ari, how are we doing? We are doing well. Glad to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So I had admired your background for quite some time. Our production team wanted to find you. And here we are. You're here. We've got the five questions that we ask all our guests on each episode of the Ramp Podcast. But before we jump in, just want our audience to know who is Ari Levine? Who is Ari Levine? Uh, We're getting deep. Ari Levine, <laughs> Ar, yeah, Ari Levine is someone who finds that to be a profound question. Now, all, all jokes aside, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a friend. And the reason I'm here today is because I'm the vice president of brand partnerships and sales at Tumblr, as well as WordPress.com, as we're part of the same shared parent company, Automatic. I've been in the media advertising business for somewhere between 15 to 20 years in different sales roles, primarily at a lot of startups. I like to be the first or second salesperson and sales professional within an organization. And, and that's really been a, a through line uh, across my career. Great, great. And seems to echo, you know, some of the things that we, we loved about you on paper, long career, very impressive companies. Yeah, it's really cool that you have been the first salesperson or first sales leader on, on different teams. Your perspective will be invaluable today. So if you're cool with it, we'd love to jump into those five questions we ask every guest. Let's do it. All right. Question number one, what is the best investment an early career salesperson can do for themselves and why? Do the work. Find every opportunity to go above and beyond. Oftentimes, especially early in your career, you'll see things within the organization or process that don't necessarily feel like they make sense to you. There's often a lot of work, a lot of things to complain about, not enough resources. People don't understand the sellers at the bottom of the chain, but just focus on doing one thing at a time to get it off your list. So whether that's getting your calls done, getting your updates in CRM, your emails, your face-to-face -face meetings, whatever it is, we build brick by brick. And you build brick by brick to get through what's in front of you. And then it takes making that whole line of bricks before sometimes you understand where you're going. And it takes building the whole wall, if you will, not to get too lost in the analogy, but it takes building the whole wall to actually understand the what and whys of it all. And it's often hard to understand those whys, like we all do it on the micro, on the macro levels, but the, those rote basic sales motions and experiences will give you a foundation to have thick skin, to understand process, to understand and learn the whys and the hows and eventually come up with what works best for you. Doing the research, searching for not only the brands you're calling on, but the humans you're calling on on social to understand them better. Even before I picked up the phone, when I was early in my career and I was dialing for dollars, you know, I would try and understand and, and get in the head a little bit of the person that I was calling. A lot of salespeople will be very ambitious, especially early in their career. And there's a gap sometimes between confidence and capabilities. We all suffer from that at, at all points in our careers. But the only thing to do to close that gap is to actually do the work repeatedly and learn from it. The, the one last part that I would add that's part of that work is networking. Go out and meet as many people as possible and, and understand that it's not to be transactional and it's not to get deals today. I am still connected with and getting referrals and hiring and collaborating with people that I met at networking events 20 years ago when I was first figuring out what my career meant to me, what a career was, where I was going, and the amount of learning and connections that you can get, especially early on, will be so foundational to the success of your career over the long term. That's a great answer. Um, do the work critically, critically important, especially at that early phase of your career. A lot of folks jump into a sales role for a variety of reasons. We see it constantly. I've seen it throughout my career, but you know, it could be any reason of just wanting to break into the specific company, wanting to break into an industry and kind of forget that it really is a, you know, a, a, a work oriented role. You're not, it's not going to come easy. You have to get through all those rejections, those attempts before you actually get to the promise and whatever that is for you kind of off that thought, that thread, if you could narrow down, because it's the first time I think we've really heard this theme of, or this concept of networking, just to network, to expand your, your horizon. You know, we live in a, a different time this year and last year and somewhat of the year before with COVID, how has networking changed or how are you seeing folks network today versus 
maybe when you and I, or we, we started our careers where it was kind of events based or at a bar, some yeah, at your company, you know, on the sales floor, et cetera. There's, there's a number of ways. Uh, first, I'll say that to some extent where it's safe and where people are comfortable, there are events happening today that even if it went away for a while is back and it's in pockets and it's maybe not the same, but in some ways, if you're up for it, and I don't judge if people aren't comfortable doing it, it might be even a better opportunity because there's less people out and about doing it. But there's also a lot of amazing online tools and resources. I, early on in the pandemic, was using a service called Lunch Club, which essentially connects you on a weekly basis. You get to choose how many people you might meet and based on what interests and uh, what areas you're looking to learn or connect on to, to what goals. And weekly, I would get a few invites in my calendar and I would sit and I would talk to a stranger. And sometimes it was like, oh my God, this is great. Let's connect. Let's network. I'll make introductions. Sometimes it was nice to talk to someone for a few minutes and then move on. But really no different than what would happen if you were working a room or at a networking event. I also think that part of networking today and even long before COVID and the pandemic was social selling and using the, the tools at our disposal that we use as humans every day anyway to build our brand. And it doesn't have to be overthinking what your brand is, but to share what you're doing, what you're working on, what your thoughts are, to show support for partners or things that are just interesting. A platform like Twitter has always been a go-to for me for a long time. And there's probably a lot of other great channels that people are using. I mean, there, there's all the audio stuff. Like Clubhouse came and went a little bit during the pandemic, but for a lot of people, uh, you know, I, I know it was a great opportunity to connect and learn and, and meet new people. Yeah, it's great. We are massive fans of Twitter and LinkedIn over here at Ramped. And Lunch Club has been something that we've explored throughout, in and out throughout the pandemic, a great way to meet people. So thanks for those tips and, and tricks as well. Moving on to question number two. How has your view on sales changed throughout your career and why do you think that's happened? So despite being in sales my, my whole career, really since my, my first job out of college, uh, like many who I run into, I was very much a self-hating salesperson. I, didn't, I wasn't always proud to tell people I was a salesperson. Even when I was a Tumblr my first time in 2012, we called all of our salespeople brand strategists which now has spread throughout all the social platforms and obviously a little bit of a differentiated role today, but I used to describe it as secret sales. I thought salespeople were slicksters that were trying to separate you from your money. Like I said, I was embarrassed at times, you know, people have these ideas of used car salespeople, real estate pushers, boiler room calls. But as I, as I matured, I came to understand that one, the people who put those cliches in people's heads were not good at their jobs. And how crucial and positive sales are like business is sales like at its core business is the exchange of goods or services for cash and that's what sales people are doing we're generating money for businesses for organizations for all for companies and on top of that it's not just about that transaction the best sales people the good ones will add value and expertise to the solutions that they bring to the table for their clients and their prospects they're partners they're honest they build their own category expertise and have perspective on the marketplace from speaking with a lot of different clients and partners. And they could add so much value to their clients and prospects when they, when they tap into that expertise. The absolute best will even point you to solutions and products that aren't theirs if it's the better fit for them because they understand that what's better for your business over the long term is going to be better for theirs personally as well as the company, the organization they represent. So I came to understand that salespeople is so crucial to the consumers, to the companies I've worked for, and then obviously to myself as well. And, and I say about myself because I didn't set out to be in sales. I fell into it. I was a hustler, a hard worker, and a sharp thinker. And I gravitated towards sales because it was a job. I had a degree in history, and it was a way I could make money. But then I, I started realizing that as a generalist myself with the diverse interests, and, and I think you, you sort of hinted at this earlier, that why some people turn to sales, I could actually get exposure and learn about things and be close to things that were important or interesting to me. I was a music guy. I used to be an aspiring rapper and I fell in love with social media because of what I was able to do many years ago on MySpace. So to me, when I was able to get a sales job at Getty Images doing music licensing and, and content licensing, it was perfect. 
And then I was into startups and internet culture. So moving to internet and then mastering them all and going to Tumblr for my first time and then beyond, it's allowed me to have a career to earn money, to feed my family, to go to amazing places around the world, learn nonstop and meet some of the people I looked up to in my personal life. And that's been pretty remarkable. Yeah, really well stated and great anecdotes there. And you're right. Sales gets a bad rap. I am a struggling at the points of my career, struggled to figure out how to be okay or be settled in sales with the tag or the terminology. And it is, I think it's certainly painted one way in the movies and you know, what you see on, on different media sources, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street boiler room types, you, you mentioned it directly, but it's also, it's also like the interaction you've had with somebody in your life. You know, when you meet that one car salesman, or you meet somebody who's really, <laughs> really selling you and you're just thrown off by it. And it's something that sticks out. And what you don't realize is that the folks that are actually probably doing the best job selling many times don't make it feel like you're selling at all. It makes you feel like they're just helping you guide along a, a whether it's a big or small decision. It's amazing that you, you use that language because when I, when I left Tumblr my first time in, in 2014, I went to work for VaynerMedia for Gary Vaynerchuk, who's one of the world's best sales guys. And this was the first time that Gary had ever looked to hire an outside salesperson. When he went to his team and started talking about what he was looking for, I was told at the time, that it was universally across the agency. Everyone said, well, Ari Levine is one of the salespeople who sells to you, but it doesn't feel like he's selling. He's, he's really there to help us. And that's why they tapped me on the shoulder and I went over to do new business in, uh, for Gary. Now, just as, as a quick aside uh, on top of that is that there's a great book called Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. And that really helped me shift some of my perception years ago as well. When I came to understand how everyone is selling, even if they don't use it. Even when I got to VaynerMedia and I met the agency account people, I scratched my head and said, you'll all hate to hear this, but you're all salespeople. You're all selling every day. When I'm trying to convince my wife to go on a vacation, I'm, I'm selling her. That, that, one's pretty, that one's pretty transactional. But yeah. I, 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 think, I think you get the gist of it, right? Like yeah, everything totally. is about influence and, and trying to bring people around to, to your perspective and yeah. finding the happy medium there. That's right. And, and even, you know, as something as lightweight as, yeah, it's, you said it great. I'm just rem remembering this morning, trying to get my two and a half year old to put on shoes, right. To get out the door to, to preschool, right. I had to, that, it was that a lot sales. of convincing. That's the hardest, that's the hardest sales of the day, hardest sale of the day, honestly. Yeah. Um, but, but you're, but, but you're, but you're right. And, and it is like, you know, through the interview process, which we coach a lot of folks through, you are selling yourself every second of that process. And if you don't have a pitch, they're going to pick somebody else. If you don't have that really lined up and the reasons why you're going to be good for, for that role, somebody else is going to take it. So it's, it, it is, it really echoes through your entire life. And there's not enough emphasis put on it anywhere academically or really anywhere thoughtfully throughout your life. It's just kind of either learned or not learned and looked at negatively or looked at positively. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's really, really an important skill to build and grow and, and nurture, which is a good segue into our next question. But what is one mistake that you made early in your career that shaped the way you operate today? And how did it shape you? No, I, I made a lot of mistakes and I still make them all the time. I, I'll tell you, honestly, I, I took a call the other day and I blew it. You know, I was too eager and I spoke too much and I listened too little and, and I got up and I said, I, I really missed that opportunity. So ongoing mistakes, but, but I'll tell you the, the big one was thinking that my, um, my natural talent at being, you know, I said before, I'm like a hustler, you know, uh, would be enough. And that just virtue on my being able to walk in the room with some flowery language and razzle and dazzle that I'd be able to get a deal done. Tied to that is also the idea that I could sell anything. I mean, I probably could, but it's more a question of, do I want to? And where can I do my best? And where can I be my total self and bring myself? I've, I've had um, the privilege of really working for the most part at companies and businesses that I've deeply believed in. And that's allowed me to develop a category expertise and be passionate at the same time. And it's why I consider myself to be a marketer as much of a salesperson because I'm an expert in social media marketing and content and cultural trends and emerging technology, which is exciting to me personally. 
aligns with my clients' needs, with my product, and is what's allowed me to have a career and not just a job and actually do my best work. Because at the instances where I've said, oh, I could just take a job and I could sell this, sure. You know, I, I'm sure there's a lot of SaaS salespeople listening in right now. I'm, I'm a media sales guy. I'm an agency services sales guy. I tried my hand at SaaS once and I was like, oh, how hard could it be? I'm a sales dude. And I didn't do well. And, and that was a big lesson to me in making sure to truly understand and believe in and be able to speak passionately about what I'm selling because that's when I do my best work. That's great perspective. Great perspective. It's like a combo of obviously that early career, let's call it hubris. We all maybe had it early in our career. Like we, we got this out to conquer the world. I'm, I'm so great. I've been told great. Maybe I've been told great my entire life. And now I'm in the real world smacked in the face with a bunch of other really, really successful or, or great people. And then the other thing is really just identifying your passion and knowing your lane. I think it sounds like you, you identified that even like more specifically the niche within the niche within tech or tech sales, you identified it's media for you versus SaaS, which is completely different. And uh, it takes time to to understand, and it isn't just as easy as if you're great at sales, you could sell anything. It is you really you got to care. You got to care about what you're selling, and you have to. Uh, it's 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 something I learned at at some of the roles that I've taken in my career too. Like if I don't care, I'm not going to put out my best work. It's just a fact, especially mm -hmm. when you're on the front lines talking to customers, prospects, trying to sell, and you have to you just have to believe, and you can't teach it. You just have to know. You, you just have to know, but, but once you know, you also have to work to upskill, you know, that should be mm -hmm. a, a lifelong career long endeavor. You can always yep. be better. You can always, like I, like I said there, you can always make mistakes and, and as long as you learn from them and you can always do more training, you can always read more books. There's new thoughts. I, I've been listening to your podcast in preparation for this, and that's been a great way to sort of set some inspiration for myself as well as some other media sales podcasts that I've recently discovered that I'm saying, oh, that's good. And I'm, you know, I'm stopping my run to jot down some notes because I care. And, and that's where those two pieces come together. Yep. Yep. It doesn't stop just because you made it one place doesn't mean you'll make it at the next. And again, it's an evolution. You've changed, business has changed, the world has changed. So everything changes from stop to stop. And I think you're making me reflect a little bit too and right now, but when I think back on the places I had stops along my career, you know, in the moment, they feel like the most important things and the most important time, the most important place, and they're just gone so quickly. And when they're gone, you just, you don't get them back. You don't ever work with the same group of super smart, intelligent, thoughtful people ever again. You don't get the opportunity to share, you know, have that collective shared knowledge and it's, it's fleeting. So you have to just continue to evolve and grow and mature. And, and you said it best, continue to get skilled, continue to learn. That's it. Nice. Well, question number four, we'll do some reflection as well. Who has had the greatest impact on your career and expand if you, if you don't mind. Yeah. And listen, I, I can, uh, my career, my life, it, parallels, right? So I could talk about my children who give me perspective and joy and inspiration, my wife who's supportive and helped me make some of these career decisions, my dad who was actually a, a teach. both my parents were teachers, but my dad taught debate and public speaking and has always been a, a coach and cheerleader for me. But, but really in the work, it's been the people that I've worked with that have had the impact. And that's both the good and the bad. You know, starting with the bad, like there have been so many people along the way, whether I was just getting started and saw people in the cubicle next to me, or whether it was VPs or, or managers who, who had bad habits or attitudes, a lot of entitlement in across the world, but certainly in business and in sales, an inability to evolve and grow in, in new environments. I saw a lot of these things playing out early and they've always been good reminders to me of how not to be and sort of raise flags and say, all right, how did this person get to be so stuck in where they are? And you realize how much of it comes from their own work and their own attitude and their, their own approach or a lack of upskilling or a lack of passion for what they're actually doing and a lack of ability to evolve, you know, especially in startups where every company can be different and within a company, every day can be different. That, and I think you said this uh, a moment ago, 
the success that you've had elsewhere doesn't mean anything for where you are today. And, and I've seen a lot of people say, well, I got here. So I, when I did this here and there and this other place, this is how I did it. And this is how it's going to work. And then when it doesn't work, they're not sure what to do. So I've gotten a lot of inspiration from those people. And then on the, the, the flip side, I, I've had the opportunity to work with some of the uh, most amazing salespeople in the world. And I'm truly grateful and privileged for that because there, there's people that I've looked at that I've said, I want to be like that and I want to learn. And then as I work with them, I say, well, maybe this part of it, and, uh, that would work for me, but this wouldn't work for me. And, and I can upskill in this area and, and people that have pushed me and, and people that have provided healthy competition, which I think is important in sales as well, healthy competition. But those folks have been inspiration, like the people around me that are getting it. You know, folks that I know that went from being account managers to SVPs of revenue very quickly. Like, how did that person do it? What can I learn from it? How can this be applicable to me? Not that that has to be my route, right? Everyone has their own route and you don't need that level of competitiveness. But I've just learned so much from both the incredible as well as the less incredible people I've worked with over the years. That's a good perspective. I think maybe the first time we're doing a lot of firsts, but maybe the first time we've heard the, uh, the other side of the coin of learning from, let's call it the mistakes or lack of whatever from, from others is also important as well. Like, you know, inherently, I think if you've worked with enough folks, like who are the best, who, you know, maybe don't perform and why. And a lot of times it's not like the folks who there's sometimes it is because folks are just not as talented or not as skilled or something is actually like structurally missing. But a lot of times it really just boils down to wrong mindset, wrong attitude, and just like a blinder to the things that actually matter. They're really great sales. I've worked with tons of really great salespeople at companies where they should just, is you know, set up very nicely for them and they just couldn't figure it out. And a lot of times it's just within them, not something you could do either as a coach or a peer to get them focused in the right direction. It's just, you know, foundational stuff like, Hey, they just came in every day and sat by themselves and uh, didn't want to learn from their peers and were out to, uh, to just simply build their own book of business and didn't think about the bigger picture. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. It can be that simple. You know, another thing is, is really just the acceptance of like what's in your control versus not what's in your control. And that, that comes down to finger pointing and sort of say, well, marketing isn't doing X, Y, Z for me. And, you know, you, you get a lot of people that get stuck in that rut and that's where that evolution and change. And, and listen, we all fall into it. We all have our complaints and, and nothing ever works a hundred percent the way it should, but it, it's how you internalize that and let that either be a motivator or blocker, you know, Ryan Holiday, not sure if you are familiar with him. He's a, an author and former marketer. And he's really big yeah. on the Stoics and Stoicism. And one of his books is The Obstacle is the Way. And that, that's something that I, I remind myself of regularly, that sometimes those challenges that set other people back actually are the opportunity. And if you can see that, you can make yourself better and you can make your business better. Yep. hundred percent, hundred percent. Listen to a few of his uh, daily stoic podcasts. So know, know him, not all that well, but I know him, I know him well, I like his stuff. And you know, you got to see that evolution, I think probably up for, at, at the most elite level with Gary V, right? He's, he was a pioneer of early media or whatever you want to call the vlog media. I don't know how you probably got a better term for it than I do. And then he's matured into, he seems to be everywhere, honestly, any new trend, he's all over it. And you know, that one day you're going to see him living out his dream as owner of the jets. I'm very confident he will, he will achieve that as well. Uh, he's just that type. I'm confident of that as well. And if I was uncertain, just from being a, a viewer and consumer of his content, seeing up close and, and personal, I can all but guarantee it. It's awesome. It's awesome. Well, last question for you. One we've asked all our guests, all three seasons of the Ramp podcast. If you could go back in time, now that you have the benefit of hindsight, what advice would you give yourself as you are entering into your career and why? It's a tricky one. You know, and, and even thinking about this in advance, I was like, well, you know, start early. And then it was like, well, don't start so early. Take your time, relax. Like there's a long road ahead. I think that, you know, when I started my career, I didn't know where it was going to lead. And my first sales, my first like real job out of college, I was in 
jewelry sales and wholesaling and distribution, which is very different than the startups and the world I'm in now and the media advertising world. And there's definitely been times where I've looked back and said, oh, if I hadn't spent those three and a half years walking around trying to sell diamonds, I had, uh, you know, imagine what I could have done in the media space. But the truth is, it was through my time living my life while I was doing that other job that showed me the inspiration for social media and um, the democratization of content creation. So that inspired me to work in the world that I work in today. So what I would really say to people is relax a little bit. You know, like, again, people are very ambitious. There are certain entitlements, I think social media for all that I'm very passionate about it has only made this worse with making people feel like they're not doing enough and a sort of hustle culture, if you will. So I would say there's a long road ahead and you should learn and enjoy it and be open-minded. And then, you know, specifically with your colleagues, I know early on in my career, I was very competitive with my colleagues, but in retrospect, I think there were a lot of things I could have learned from people along the way that I was closed off to. I was like, well, this is my way and this is how I do it. And this is how I should whether that's, you know, uh, literally how you craft an email to how you put together a proposal to what you call yourself, whether you're calling yourself a brand strategist or a salesperson. And, and part of the competitiveness is it's not just what you don't learn. It's also it's like you, you mature a little bit and you realize that few things in life, certainly not in business and sales are zero sum games, right? Like, yes, perhaps you're, competitive company someone's going to get the deal but the people that are in the trenches with you there's enough for everyone and it's like people are like oh, i want this account and that account and this person hasn't closed so let me get that account now and there's this sort of aggressiveness that that happens internally sometimes around salespeople. i think it's because people don't realize that it's it's not a zero-sum game and there's more that they can learn from their peers than just trying to look at them as people to clear off the board so they can get their accounts which Maybe your listeners don't think about. Maybe I was just a little bit too uh, too aggressive in my approach. But if there's anyone out there like that, that that's my message for you. It's great advice. Great advice. It's going to hit hard and hit home with a lot of our audience because I know there's tons of y'all who are early career about to enter into that first sales job. So sound advice and and great great wisdom. And I think a thread that's tied this entire episode together has been reflection, like being able to reflect on your career, reflect on the stop. And also the second one I would say is really enjoying the ride, enjoying every step of the way. And you put it all very eloquently, Ari, and we very much appreciate you coming on the show and sharing your wisdom and your guidance with us. And for folks out there, you know, Ari just dropped a ton of knowledge on us. So <laughs> we we're honored that he did so and very, very happy that he did as well. Ari, where can folks find you? You can find me all over the internet. First and foremost, uh, Tumblr, arielevine.tumblr.com. Lightweight blogging and you know a lot of hip hop that I'm a big fan of and, and some funky art. You could find me on LinkedIn, Ari Levine. You could find me on Twitter, at Ari Levine. You can send me an email, ari at arielevine.com. I might regret that one, but uh, you yeah. know, <laughs> reach out. I'm, I'm always happy to learn with, with people. I'm always happy to connect, always happy to try and help people find great opportunities, jobs, whatever it might be. And it's all about the long game and building relationships. So feel free to reach out. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. Loved, loved this episode and everybody I know out there will as well. So thanks again, Ari Levine. Really appreciate your guidance today. Thank you so much for having me, Danny. And thank you for all the work that you and the team do on the, the Ramp podcast. Um, I know you're impacting a lot of people. So keep it up. Appreciate it. Of course. Until next time.